Welcome back, everyone, to more Zero K Exhibition matches. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are back with a one v one. Israide versus Randy Israide on shields. Randy on Cloaky, and both players playing on Living Lands. One of the maps. Actually, one of the one of the most viable small maps. Honestly, I'd say it's. I was about to say one of my not really my favorite maps by any stretch. It's just one of those maps that comes up a lot. And honestly, it is a pretty good map. It's, like I said, it's a small map that works out reasonably well for its size, largely on account of being a a diagonals map. His ride going for a pretty quick reclaim setup. Randy very quickly setting up for... Are they going for southeast? Oh, southeast reclaim. Yeah, they're going for both. He's a ride, on the other hand, being a little more aggressive early on. Which kind of makes sense. I mean, Randy's playing Cloakbot, so they can kind of run away with the Conjurer should they need to. He is right, on the other hand, playing Shields. Isn't quite so able to get out of dodge in a bad situation. That being said, there's nothing defending this this particular Conjurer, so it is done. Glaive coming in to try to solve the problem. Too little, too late. Though between the Drone and the Glaive, there should be enough to get rid of the Bandit, and indeed there is. So one of the Conjurers is indeed saved. The one in the more risky position, to be honest. However, Randy now basically on par with Ezerite as far as production, as far as economy. And maybe a little behind when it comes to their army values. Or I would say that it were not for the fact that these these bandits are getting picked off one by one. He's right in a bit of an awkward position right now. They can't really advance without opening themselves up too much. Randy seems to realize this and taking advantage of the opportunity to expand up front, getting one of the plus three metal extractors over by the center. On the other hand, Izzerad looking to find a sneaky way around the map. Kind of like this too. If we look here, those those bandits can't be seen because the radar from the commander cannot go that far. Like very clever use of the train there by Izzerad. It's a small thing, but. You know, it's good to do from time to time. Snitch as well going over to the southeast side of the map. It might be able to find the Conjurer. If it does, that Conjurer is dead. But no, it looks like it's just for defense. Ezerai just making sure just to cover their cover their bases, cover their flanks, make sure they don't get hit by anything. Wise move too, as they are moving in here. 15 seconds remain for this Reaver to get done. The Bandits will be arriving right as the Reaver is finished. Especially with the assist build. Randy... Quickly switching off to that, the bandits won't be able to do much damage. Forced to retreat, and now Randy, knowing exactly where Ezerite has been setting up, knows there is plenty of room to continue to expand. Actually, Randy going for a very strong commander push here. And it's Guardian Commander, already level 3. At the same time, the bandit's able to cover the flank, get around the side, and start taking out some of these metal extractors. Strong play coming in from Randy. Make sure they... Ezeride maintains that economic advantage, which, to be fair, they actually have been. Ezeride is ahead. Like, don't get it wrong. Ezeride, while they have... They didn't quite take the center as quickly, they've... put themselves way ahead in terms of overall economy. And unit value is about even. Actually, I'm gonna look... Uh, we'll check later. Let's check now. Alright, so... Unit value... Army, well, total value is about the same. Army value is a little bit an advantage of Ezeride. Defense value looks to be about the same. Yeah, Ezeride actually pulling ahead very slightly in the numbers. Randy depending entirely on the commander's pressure. That is what is meant to be giving them this game. They can win on calm pressure, really wreck, re really wreck Ezeride's base with a single strong commander built in. They have a solid chance. And to be fair, it's buying a lot of time for reinforcements. From here, Randy is doing a great job getting in here. Oh, as Randy pointing out in chat, my grammar and my forum posts has been a little bit off. I keep saying cast it on YouTube, not cast on YouTube. I... Yeah, okay, fair enough. And I feel like casted and cast are two different past tenses. Like, cast is the past tense for, like, making a mold. Well, 
Oh, no, I guess it kind of makes sense, too, because if you're talking about, like, casting for a show, for instance, it's, you know, the show gets cast. Eh, I don't know. Grammar aside, is Randy coming in here, correcting my grammar and correcting my assumptions about the way this is going to play out as Israelite's commander taking heavy damage, Randy once again maintaining full control over the center of the map. Hasn't yet rebuilt there, though. Constructor going to do that right now, and they are, despite their comments in Twitch chat, actually remembering to build radar. A little infrequently, but they are remembering to. Fortunately for them, the commander does... They, they were making comments in Twitch chat about being bad at remembering to make radar since starting to play again. Fortunately for them, commanders always start with radar. Or at least they should. Yeah, field radar, I believe, is a base thing now. Oh, dear. I'm losing faith in myself. No, field radar is definitely a base. It has a base upgrade. All commanders get field radar, which is a nice little thing because there's so much that goes on in this game. There's so many unknowns at all times. And there's so many unknowns regarding direction. Like, there, that's the thing about 0k is there's never really this fixed direction. There's kind of a general idea of where your opponent's coming from. But there's never really a totally fixed direction. So it's nice to have radar. And it's nice to have radar at all times. Or at least to start with radar. Just makes the start of the game a little bit less intimidating. Granted, we're way past the start of the game, and Izaride able to break a bit of Randy's construction at the same time. Also, are these expansions under Randy's nose? I must know. They are partially. The one over to the northwest is. The one over to the center west is not. But Randy doesn't have the firepower to get rid of the one in the center west. Which is fine. I mean, the one in the center west is going to... It's going to be building up, and that's giving Izzeride room to get back in this game. And actually, with that Izzeride, I mean, again, they've had the economic advantage this entire time. If we look at the numbers, their army value is reflecting that as well. Despite Randy winning the attrition game. Oops. So with that, I think... I think Randy is going to have to look into doing a little bit of raiding off the sides. Izzeride, however, is prepared for that. Randy taking the center instead, and that is, again, something that Izzeride seems prepared for. As Shieldbot builds up there, they become increasingly intimidating. And, of course, as that happens, it becomes harder and harder to actually deal with what they've like their ball. Now, at this point, Izzeride doesn't have much of a ball. They're focused a lot on building up defenses. They have reasonably strong offense, but they don't have a great ball for the Felon. Now, granted, Randy has an army that will die to Felon if there's enough shield, but there really isn't. There's just a thug. Now, these convicts, if they were to go to the front lines and start dealing, helping with the Felon, there'd be some hope, but that's not the case. Not to mention Randy's commander, level 8 commander with 7400 HP, tanking out that Felon. No problems there, as Izzeride also leads Randy's forces straight to one of their expansions. Granted, leads to the expansion while killing them. But not in great enough numbers that's going to cause a major issue for reclaim. I and mean, we see right now, check the reclaim, 72 metal to reclaim. I mean, there's 300 metal to reclaim off the rocks that are already here. So not a huge deal. Izzeride didn't gain a whole lot from that exchange, but Randy gained a lot of information. I'm fairly certain that it. Let's double check. Well, yeah, the radar is absolutely gaining the information. Randy at the moment is looking... Still looking a little bit on the back foot. I mean, their their commander is very strong, but it's very concentrated. And Izzeride is taking full advantage of that, flanking around the side, sending units everywhere just to, you know, deal with a few expansions here and there. Force Randy to move around with the lighter units that they've been focusing their army on, with their commander, of course, being the primary focus for their economy. Which means Izzeride has, again, been kind of gaining an economy, er, army advantage and increasing the large army advantage. Now, in I, by contrast, Randy has made a strider out of their commander. So what's going to come down to is how well Randy's army is going to be able to deal with that. Thug Rogue, not a bad combination for dealing with a strider commander. Just comes down to positioning. And of course, there's also the, you know... Thug Felon down here, which is 
proving to have some issues when it comes to dealing with the slings. However, that's a defensive force. As long as that holds the line, it's okay. Because Izzeride, they're still a, they're still ahead when it comes to economy. They've now taken the southeast. The eastern expansion was never taken for any length of time by Randy. And the center, while it is being taken pretty well, is only holding on so much. Not to mention Randy being completely locked down for drone production, meaning it becomes even harder, apart from the slings, to actually get into the northwest expansion. While at the same time, the eastern side of the map is being wrecked, and Randy has some but little awareness of it. They do have some radar, but honestly, this might be too little too late. Knight coming up front takes out the outlaw a little bit. It's not doing much damage. Unfortunately, not enough rogues here to threaten the knight significantly. Forcing a small mini retreat, allowing for a regrouping from Randy. At the same time, in the center, we have, well, several Ronin looking to find a fight. Not finding much, but the rogues should be able to regroup with the rest of Israelite's forces from that Ronin fight. Help deal with these knights. Instead, however, the again, this group is almost being used as a distraction to allow for attack in the center. At the same time, though, the Northwest has been lost by Israelite. Randy... Still kind of behind when it comes to their economy overall. But it is not going to be that easy. And there's the regroup. Felons coming in alongside the rest of the shield ball. Along with the rogues. And there it is. Full felon shield ball set up. This is the ball that Izarai needed. This is the ball that will pierce Randy's defenses. If anything will. And it's certainly looking strong in the numbers. The Felon, unfortunately, did burn a lot dealing with the Knights, because the Knights are a great counter here. I mean, any tanky unit is going to make a Felon waste a lot of the Shield Ball's shields, making it much easier to counterattack. But it may not be enough. This Knight is just going down. And, of course, there are the Rogues that are already here. And the Rogues just deal with the Knights, and the Felons are providing a lot of supplemental damage. Unfortunately, having drained all the shields, these slings are a massive threat to the shield ball. Forcing this entire shield ball to retreat. I mean, we're getting itself back up soon enough. But yeah, those slings are a problem. There's only so much that can be done there, and unfortunately, it's not enough. Snitch trying to come in, but gets caught out by the slings. And now Izzerai taking the low ground, forced to have to walk uphill against knights and slings. I do not like those odds. And it's not really a distraction either. There's nothing over to the western side of the map blocking out anything Ezra or anything Randy does. The drones are being slowed down. But that's it. Randy's primary force is over in the eastern side of the map and it's doing amazing. Ezerite still has the army value advantage in terms of, you know, raw money. But in terms of positioning and unit types, Randy is way ahead. Shields, however, haven't been re replenished. We do see Izzerite go for it. They take out one knight. Are they going to be able to take out another? Are they going to be able to go from there to taking out the slings is the bigger question. And I have expect we're going to be seeing some bandits fairly soon, but no, we are in fact seeing an ultimatum. Ah, clever. Your opponent's gone for a Strider Commander. Build up the Strider Killer. With that, Izzerite should be able to at least... Get rid of the commander, opening up the eastern or the western side of the map. Actually, opening up a lot of reclaim too, if they're able to back that up. Like send this force here to back up the ultimatum. And to be fair, the eastern front is holding. Some slings over to the south are causing small issues, but being as spread out as they are, there is actually an opportunity for these forces to come around, and then move up here. Blocking the slings from behind. That does cede a lot of territory to Randy, however. Not an ideal situation to be in, but better than losing all of your economy. And if it opens up the slings to being killed, and that's exactly, in fact, what Israel's doing, if that opens up the slings to being killed, well, so much the better, because now you have fewer slings to worry about. And there's the ultimatum getting rid of the commander, completely wiping that out. Randy losing a huge amount of firepower. The Western Front is essentially opened up to Israel. And Randy. Their response, build Lico. Yeah, actually, that's a pretty good response, all things considered. I mean, Lico's doing an amazing job against the shield balls. 
So yeah, build a leak or get that splash damage to work out. Shields, however, have had a chance to recharge, and the slings are forced to retreat. I, they do not have the speed to deal with this. Reaver's doing their best to come in here, and of course, Knights with their EMP damage does a lot of damage to shields. But it's not going to be enough. And the Thunderbird coming in too. The Felons, however, stopping the Thunderbird from disarming more than a couple of units and damaging the shields only a little bit. Enough to force a regroup, but not so much as... It, not so much as to completely ruin Isaride's chances. However, Isaride's starting to fall behind an economy. Randy has... I only got 25 metal here. Isaride building up some of their economy once again. There is the commander, though. Like, worth noting, I mean, Isaride's own commander is right here. They have... Really? Only 400 metal worth of reclaim? Only 400 metal worth of reclaim. All the... Uh, okay. Wow. Didn't realize that's quite how it worked out with the commander modules, but apparently, yeah, it's only like 10% of the commander's value. Still, 500 metal worth of reclaim in a 1v1 is nothing to be scoffed at. I mean, is right that for the commander, that's plus 10 for about a minute. So, getting that. We'll be quite handy with Lico coming in here and doing exactly what I was talking about. Getting rid of the shield ball. Breaking it up considerably. Same time though, here come the bandits. Unfortunately, coming in one at a time. The rally point being set right in the firing line of the slings. Still though, nice. Nice use of the auto juke. The bandits, I mean, it's not on fight mode. So, you know, why not? Coming in here, getting rid of the slings. They will have to deal with the imp, however. There's a few imps being set up around the map. Only one outlaw is in play. So, Izzeride, you're going to be in a little bit of an awkward position right now. Having only the one outlaw. The imps could come in, and actually, more importantly, this scorpion so close to getting hit by the slings. One errant shot would completely wreck the surprise of the Scorpion. Ah. I say that as another Leco comes in and wipes out everything that had been built up in the shield ball. And that's the cue. Israel goes for it. Figures, hey, there's all of these... All these slings. Maybe a few glaives. A Thunderbird or two, but that's fine. Only gets rid of some of the bandits. And just an entire line of bandits just coming in, constantly reinforcing. Scorpion moving up as well. I don't know if I agree with this. The Scorpion is going to be in a bit of an awkward position. Does get spotted by the Imp. Does get hit by the Imp for really no effect. Does at least manage to do some damage back. And tie up the Leco for a little while. Although, I say the Leco. I guess it is the only one. Alright. The Leco. Ties up the Leco for a bit. And actually long enough that the Bandits are able to come in here. Another Thunderbird Strike, far more effective than the last one. Wiping out most of the bandits. Izzeride, I really kind of wish they'd retreat these bandits right now. Like, all the stunned ones, just get them out of there. But no, they're pushing forward. This is just confidence. Izzeride, whoever coming in here, not... Oh, ultimatum went down. Did some damage, but more importantly, Izzeride able to completely assault the base. Yeah, ultimatum. I should... Yeah, forever pointing in the chat. Izzeride having Scorpion and Ultimatum in the same match. Yeah, that was... I mean, like I said, Izzeride had an economic advantage the entire time. Randy was doing a great job with unit counters, and they're relatively even the whole time. But Randy spent most of their money on their commander. And the commander... I mean, it was doing a bit of a push, but the strength it was at... I mean, it could have pushed in probably to the main base before the Ultimatum was done. And if it had done that, there would have been an opening. But it... It was made, it was built up, there was all this money poured into it, or all this metal poured into it, and it didn't end up really paying off. Like, that, to me, is the biggest problem. Is that, and we can see from the attrition stats, like, 3,000 metal, that's basically the cost of the commander. And a commander with that much put into it should be able to win the game. Like, no joke, that they were pretty close in the economy, in the army value, and Randy was doing a really good job building unit counters. I mean, look at how much effort Izzeride had to put in just to break half of the slings and deal some damage to the main base. And it didn't even break the factory or anything really meaningful production-wise. I mean, built the, broke the airplane plant, sure. But also set up so much reclaim in their base that Randy's going to be set. So that's the thing. Randy, they had their commander, and that's where they spent all their attention and their resources, and it just didn't really break much. 
hasn't even been reclaimed either, is where I just let that sit. It's letting it rot. Doesn't even need that to win the game. Just taking everything off static economy. There's no need no stinking commander wreck. Doesn't need the rest of the wrecks, though. There's all these other wrecks over in the center of the map that are doing a lot of good for Izzeride. Randy, on the other hand, yeah, their entire economy right now is reclaim. Getting that scorpion, getting the old plant, getting the old airplane plant. Rebuilding everything. They're actually not doing too badly in terms of rebuilding, but they're not doing great in terms of map control. Not terrible, though, actually. Taking the southeast. So opening that up at least gives them some room to breathe. Unfortunately, I did not see these bandits coming in here, and that's going to be it for the glaives. And eight bandits is more than enough to get rid of two lotuses. That This is not a threat. The reaver coming in, yeah, that's a bit of a threat. But the lotuses, no. And the metal extract is going to go down. Unfortunately, the constructor, or the conjurer, will not go down. So this is still entirely in control of Randy. Hang on, are there, there aren't more vandals being built, are there? No, no, not actively. So all these vandals are basically built, I mean, okay, partly they're built for the air plant, which is not being rebuilt, we're seeing a switch to spiders, but also because of the drones, which are gone because the commander is dead. But that is not, that's still not over. He is a ride. Well, okay, it's close to over. I mean, he is a ride coming in with his big push. And with the Phoenix coming into the top two to just weaken some of these slings. Another Phoenix comes in, starts killing some of the slings, and that should open things up. That should open everything up. We're just getting... Yes, we are just getting cycle of Phoenixes. Just pretty much Phoenix after Phoenix. This is going to be it. There's, there's no real anti-air coming in here, and tarantulas aren't being built up. Gremlins are being built up. So there's a bit of anti-air. Some defenses coming in, belated defenses, mind you, and at the same time, this massive push with no real resistance, thanks to the Phoenixes making the Sling's life miserable, means that Izzeride is just able to push in and... Un okay, I guess. Also the Vandals, because why not distract things? I mean, hey, why not, actually? I think from here... What is... Like, Randy should see that they're Vandals, right? Yeah, it's not like they're seeing radar dots. Do they have radar? No, they have radar from the south southeast side of the map. That's it. Uh, this is the one radar tower they have. Yeah, having lost their commander, they don't really have a lot of work to work with in terms of radar. But hey, nice distraction coming in here from the Vandals. Opening things up a little bit. Is a ride still focused on the long game, which I certainly give props to. But now with all these slings basically going down. Izzeride sees their cue, and they go for it. Randy having reclaimed everything. Kind of back in this. I mean, if we check metal use, there's uh, a 6,000 metal difference still. And army value is a 6,000 metal difference. I mean, the metal use difference is entirely translated into army value. Which is surprising. That means Randy's actually been doing a better job than it looks like. For oh, no, 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 no. It would mean that there's defenses being built up or yeah, economy is what's being used as well. Thinking, no, the attrition doesn't match up. No, it's just like 6,000 metal worth of economy and defenses and other stuff. And Randy realizes that that 12,000 metal spread is going to be... Well, 6,000 metal really spread is going to be way too much. Throws in the towel, and Izzeride takes it after a hard-fought match with a surprising amount of striders, because really, Ultimatum and Scorpion in the same match... Yeah. Yeah, I think, honestly, if the commander had been pushed a bit forward, like, it was it was here on the western side of the map in the expansion. It's an, it's an aggro commander. Like, at that point, just continue walking in into the base. Don't even stop. Just walk. Give it a bit of support. Maybe cover it with, like, glaives or something for the ultimatum. And then, yeah. Just, that's it. Because the ultimatum wasn't even done yet. It wasn't even, I don't think, a threat that was considered. It just wasn't really there. So, yeah, considering that, the commander really, it would have been a big deal, because honestly, if that had been put into army value instead, Randy, if you look at other value, 
up here is like 4,000 at around the third-ish mark. It's around here. That 4,000 metal army value would have put Randy at a massive advantage compared to Izzeride. And already Izzeride was struggling dealing with the army that Randy did field. Because it was like their forces they didn't have enough bandits to deal with the slings. They didn't build any racketeers. They weren't really in a position, or dirtbags for that matter. They weren't really in a position to contest the slings. Not effectively. So, if there had been 4,000 metal worth of other units on top of the slings, Randy could have taken that. The push on the commander would have been fine if the commander had been used to actually break up the base. But like at that point, the commander needed to be used to win the game. Like, it was 4,000 metal. It was a strider. And it wasn't sent in to win the game. Because bear in mind, that was also 10 minutes in, or 12 minutes into the game. Yeah, that's pretty early. And again, you know, there was reasonable army value, but most of that was out of base. It was out on the side of the map. And it's not like the commander was going to defend it anyway. So if the commander had gone in for an attack, like, this base would have survived, and the commander would have done a lot of damage to Ezerride's base, and I quite easily could have turned it around. But that is that, so I must be going. I'm afraid that's going to be it for a day. I must see a woman about a cat. So, until next time, thank you all for watching, and have a good night.